Okay. Uh, we like to understand some uh, ratios. These are kind of revised ratios uh, based on the reformulation task, what we already have done. And uh, the first ratio we like to talk about the operating profitability. So you can uh, recall from your uh, conventional ratio analysis that there is a uh, return on asset ratio. So this one is the uh, modification of that ratio uh, with respect to identifying identification of uh, net operating assets separately. So here you see that uh, what we will take, uh, it is actually measuring the operating profitability. Uh, so it is not no longer the straight profitability. Here we are particularly interested with operating profitability. And uh, we are particularly interested to know for uh, $1 investment in net operating asset, how much dollar I am generating uh, by investing my operating asset into the operation, okay? So if the number is say, for example, if the number is three, so in uh, what does it indicate? It indicates that out of one taka investment in net operating asset, uh, my operation is giving me uh, point, uh, point three dollar or one dollar investment. So uh, this is coming from my core operation and not from any financial activity because I have separated out uh, operating from the financials. Okay. So what's the numerator here? Numerator here is the operating income. Uh, you can recall, uh, you can recall that uh, from the reformulation of income statement, we have measured, uh, we have made three classification of the income statement item. So one item was operating income from sales, then other operating income, then the uh, financials, okay? So here you see that which amount will be taking as operating profit, we'll be taking the operating profit after tax coming from the sales portion, operating profit after tax coming from the operating income portion. And if you already have some other operating income, which are after tax, you also have to include those, okay? And in the net operating asset, you see that it is no longer the asset. It is now net operating asset. We have learned what is net operating asset. We have learned that net operating asset is the difference uh, between the operating assets and the operating liabilities. And we have said that the difference is net operating asset. So we know that when, uh, as the beginning net operating asset was invested and over time net operating asset have been invested in the company, uh, operating asset have been invested in the company. That's why uh, by convention, we need to take the beginning and ending uh, net operating asset like the return on asset, uh, okay? So that's the reason why we take the average here. And for the financing, profitability, we like to look at this uh, from two dimension. Uh, one is from the expense dimension and another one is from the income dimension. So here you see that if I'm a company uh, who generally uh, has the financial obligation, net financial obligation. So when we have net financial obligation, if we have net financial obligation, which exceeds the uh, net financial assets, in that case, uh, okay, here it should not be uh, N. When I have the financial obligation that is over the financial asset, I have the net financial obligation, okay? So typically the companies have now, I mean, the non-finance company have the net financial obligations. So if you think of a airlines company like uh, uh, 
uh, after I say the uh, Boeing, uh, Boeing uh, might, uh, if uh, Boeing takes more financial obligations uh, than making investment in financial asset, in that case, they will have a positive net financial obligations. So you know that when you have a net financial obligations, obviously your uh, finance expense is greater than your finance income and the vice versa. So uh, we take the net finance expense, how? By subtracting the finance income from the finance expense, we get the net finance expense. We have learned how to calculate this uh, from the reformulation of income statement. And this is the denominator here, and the, sorry, a numerator here, and the denominator is the net finance obligations. So it has been identified as net borrowing cost. So actually it indicates that so out of the say 100 taka net financial obligations, uh, how much expense I'm incurring, how much finance expense I'm incurring, if it is five, five percent, that means I'm incurring five taka out of my 100 taka finance obligations, okay? But you have learned that there are some companies uh, who do not have the uh, net financial obligations, like the company uh, Dell or like the company uh, Nike uh, who uh, make a good investment uh, in the net financial asset, uh, sorry, not net financial, financial asset simply, okay? So you'll see that uh, they finance, uh, they generally do not take the financial obligation. So in that case, they have uh, they have net financial asset. They do not have the net financial obligation. For that that kind of company, net financial asset is a positive number. Okay, who have more financial assets over the financial obligations? Okay, so these companies, uh, what they do, they use the resources uh, invested by the shareholders, not only for generating income by investing in operations, they also generate income by investing in financial asset because they generate finance income. They generate uh, interest income, they generate dividend income uh, by temporarily invest their uh, money uh, excess cash in some equity securities, so they generate the, uh, this kind of financing income. So you see that uh, uh, what they uh, will have if their financial asset is over their financial obligations, you expect that they have uh, more finance income than finance expenses. So they will have net finance income. No, not net finance expense like the previous one. So that's why uh, the net finance income is a positive, uh, is a numerator here. So you understand that what kind of company it is. So this kind of company has a strategy uh, that they use the resources, not only uh, for generating uh, income from the operating activities, they also generate income by investing their money, by investing their resources in financial assets. Okay, uh, so you probably can recall that I have made uh, the example available to you, the Square Pharmaceutical, uh, out of their 100 taka uh, income in last six months, they have generated approximately 20% from their investment in financial assets. So you expect that, uh, you might expect that they have more financial assets over their financial obligations, and they also have uh, more finance income than the finance expenses. So we measure the performance of their investment in financial assets by this ratio. So how the numerator is net finance income and the denominator is the average net finance uh, asset. 
So this is the beginning and the ending. And for the same reason, what I mentioned here, uh, we take the average. I mean the beginning and the ending value. Okay. So have you got it that what uh, we have done? Have we done a complete new or this are kind of uh, the revision of some ratios what we knew earlier? Or what we already know before? Okay. Is it tax adjusted NFP or and let uh, NFI? The answer is yes. Uh, it is tax adjusted. And uh, this one also, when you are taking the operating income uh, in the net return on net operating asset, that is also after tax. Okay. Uh, I probably have mentioned. You see that all measures are after tax. Okay, so what we'll be doing now, uh, we'll try to apply our learning uh, for the Starbucks corporations. But before going there, I'd like to uh, request you to review other ratios like uh, this one, the income statement ratios, the balance sheet ratios, uh, balance sheet leverage ratios, uh, which are kind of some modifications of the existing ratios. And uh, as we are modifying the numbers, modifying the uh, numerator or denominator, obviously our interpretation will slightly change. But uh, as long as we understand the uh, interpretation of the baseline ratio, we know that how can we interpret these numbers, OK? So one of the ratios, say, for example, the financial leverage ratio. So you know that. Uh, how we measure uh, the financial leverage ratios in the uh, conventional system. But here, what we are doing, we are measuring the financial leverage ratio. In this way, we are taking the net financial obligations. So you know that when we have the net financial obligations, when I have the financial obligations over the financial assets, I should have net financial obligations. And if I divide this number by common shareholders equity, I get the financial leverage ratio. Okay, I know that what does it mean, the leverage. Okay, so, so try to review this from the page number I mentioned from T18 to T19. Uh, yeah, from T18 to T19. And what we'll do now, we'll try to apply some of the ratios uh, using the problem uh, which you were discussing from the previous class. Okay. Uh, for fiscal year 2007, calculate the following return on common equity, return on net operating asset, net borrowing cost, use beginning of year balance sheet amount in denominators. Also calculate the financial leverage ratio at the beginning of the 2007. 2007 fiscal year. Okay. Uh, you see, you have to uh, measure this ratio. Or we have to measure this ratio, but there is a caveat. We cannot use the denominator of what we just have learned. We have been said that you can use only the beginning of year balance sheet amount in the denominator. Okay. So, what can we do? Uh, we can go back to the page where we have learned. We have solved this. Okay, the first thing first, uh, it has asked us to measure the uh, return on common equity. Okay, uh, okay, let me write here. Return on common equity okay so what we have to write in the numerator 
could you please respond in the chat box that what we will write in the numerator for return on common equity? Is it the net profit? Or is it the earnings before interest and taxes or something else? Uh, after tax net operating income, I have received a response. Okay. Uh, let me take you to the numbers, what you have mentioned. You are probably indicating uh, this one. Uh, seven nineteen point five is it? Are you indicating this number when you have said operating income after tax? Uh, We have mentioned that after tax net operating income, fine. Uh, we have operating income from two sources, uh, from sales and other operating income. And from both sources, we combinedly get 719.5, okay. So the now question is, what is our numerator here? Uh, return on common equity. Is the uh, numerator should be the operating income or the finance income or the both. We have not talked about the uh, return on common equity in the previous discussion. Remember, I remember we have not talked about the return on common equity in our previous discussion. We have made discussion on uh, return on net operating asset. Now we are asking about uh, return on common equity. What do you think the, the common shareholders equity uh, deserve both operating income and the financing income or they deserve only the operating income? Write your response in the chat box so that I can see that uh, you are getting common shareholders equity deserve only the operating income or the financing income or the comprehensive income, which includes both the operating income and the finance income. Yeah, I have got the correct answer. The correct answer is both. And I do not like to spend time why common shareholders Holders equity should deserve both. Okay. Uh, uh, rather, I try to write it down the comprehensive income they deserve, which includes both uh, operating income and the finance income. And what will be the 
uh, denominator. Denominator will be uh, like half of the CSC beginning and CS CSC ending. Okay, half CSC zero and CSC one. Okay. Now you probably can recall that we have been asked in the question that you cannot use the balance sheet number uh, of both beginning year and ending year. You can use only the beginning year. Okay. That's why uh, we have to uh, remove this. Okay. Okay. Now, what is the comprehensive income we calculated uh, for our problem? You probably can recall it was 689.9. It was 689.9, 689.9. And the uh, common shareholder security we measured here uh, by subtracting the net, uh, net financial obligations from the net operating. Uh, assets. Do you have the number on your text uh, or on, on your script? Common shareholder security. So it was our operating assets. Uh, okay, uh, we'll use the beginning number. So it will come from 2006. Okay. So if you have the uh, total operating asset here and total operating liabilities, you need to measure here. Okay. And if you can recall that, uh, if you subtract the operating, liabilities from the operating asset, you get the net operating asset. And can anyone feel it? How much the operating liabilities should be here using your calculator? Using your calculator, what should be the operating liabilities in the 2006? Write your response in the chat box and I'm doing the calculation also. 288.9, 54.9. It was uh, 1,496 or you can write 97. Okay, fine. Uh, okay. So it is, it was one, I asked you to calculate this. It was 1,496.8. Uh, 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 it is the net operating assets. And if you subtract the net financial Obligations, which is here, three thirty-seven point six. Okay, so net financial obligations How much you will get?
2228.6 okay so how we are getting this common shareholders equity we have a operating asset of uh, 4063.0 we have a uh, operating liabilities of 1496.8 so we get the net operating lab, uh, net operating asset uh, we have a net operating asset which is 2560 uh, 6.2 okay uh, okay now we have a positive net financial obligations uh, that is the 337.6 now if we subtract this net financial obligations from the net operating asset we attribute this as a number for common shareholder security 2228.6 so this number should be here 2228.6 so this number indicates the return on, yeah, exactly. So this number indicates what? This number indicates the uh, return on common equity. So I asked you to solve the problem together with me so that uh, you get a higher, uh, from where the numbers are coming. You might believe that uh, these calculations are very much a straightforward, but I challenge that this number might not look straightforward when you will be in exam environment. Okay, so try to uh, utilize your resources to uh, work on this calculation, fine. Okay, uh, what is the next one? We have been asked uh, return on net operating asset. So this is a straightforward uh, return on. Let me take the black pen. Return on uh, net operating asset. So what will be the uh, numerator here, and what will be the denominator here? It should be a straightforward. Uh, here we should have. the denominator as average net operating asset but we have been asked that you can take only the beginning uh, net operating asset that's why you are taking uh, the beginning one uh, what is the beginning we already have calculated it just a few minutes ago here the beginning uh, 2566.2 what is it it is the uh, uh, net operating asset, obviously it should be average, but here uh, we are taking as beginning value, that's why we are not uh, taking the average as we are taking a single value. Now, the question, what will be the numerator? The operating income, the financial income, or the net operating income, net financial income, or the comprehensive income? What do you think? The net operating asset, which income is consistent with the denominator? Which income is consistent if we take the numerator? Uh, okay, net operating income, thanks. Uh, the net operating income is uh, 700, 719.5. Uh, I marked it a few minutes ago. You can recall, here it is. Uh, yeah, 719.5. So this is our net operating income after tax uh, from both sales and from other operating income, okay? So if we take this number here, 719.5, in that case you get, uh, what is it? It is the net 
operating income. So you'll get this number for return on net operating asset. So if the number is say 28.05%, uh, what does it indicate? It indicates that out of 100 taka investment in uh, net operating asset, what I'm doing, I'm generating 28 taka, okay? So if you compare this number with the with this ratio, what I uh, shared with you just a couple of minutes ago, you know, not this one here, the return on net financial assets. Return on net financial asset. Okay, you probably can recall that, what is it? Say for example, if the return on net financial asset is 40% uh, for some reason, uh, because the stock market is doing well, uh, the economy is not, uh, but the economy in which you are doing business is not doing good, but the stock market is doing good. And you are not doing good in terms of your operation, but uh, the companies in which you have made investments, a financial investment, you have financial assets, they are doing better. That's why you have a, a return on net financial asset, uh, this huge number, or you have generated gain from something else like uh, the revaluation of the financial assets. So what do you expect? If this is the case, will you go for making more investment in financial assets or you will be go for making more investment in operating assets? What will be the general tendency of the owners or the managers to make the uh, return on equity a beautiful number or return on assets a beautiful number? What do you think? Where they will make crowd in the operating asset investment or the financial asset investment? If the return on net financial asset is a greater number relative to the return on, on net operating asset, what will be the tendency of managers to make more investment in financial asset? Do you think it will be a sustainable activity? It will not be a sustainable thing. It will be a beautiful thing, but it will not be a sustainable thing. Okay, fine. So that is the purpose that why we are doing the reformulation and why we are spending time to understand the reformulation and why we are breaking the return into operating and financial. Okay, fine. Next thing, uh, it has been asked to measure the net borrowing cost. So probably, Starbucks Corporation uh, has more financial obligations than investment in financial assets. That's why the question has asked the net borrowing cost, NBC. Okay, so what is it net borrowing cost? What we have learned? What should be the numerator? What we have learned, what should be the numerator for the net borrowing cost? Should be a net finance expense. Okay. So what is the net finance expense we calculated in the previous class? You can recall that it was 29.5. Uh, Here it is, 29.5. So if we take the net finance expense as numerator and what should be denominator, we have been asked to take the beginning number. So here it would be net financial obligation uh, of the 2006. You can recall that we have a net financial obligations of uh, T37.6, T37.6. 
So here we are measuring here T37.6. So it will be net borrowing cost. So it indicates that the firm is uh, getting or the firm is incurring approximately 9% for its financial obligations. Okay. So uh, next thing we like to conclude all, uh, also calculate the financial leverage ratio at the beginning of the 2007 fiscal year. Okay. We just have talked about it. Uh, we have been asked to measure the financial leverage. So what we have learned about this? We have learned that it is to be calculated by uh, looking at the ratio of my net financial obligations and the uh, common shareholders equity. So we are we have already uh, measured the net financial obligations that is 337.6. And out of the common shareholder security, you also have measured it here. We have used it to uh, 2228.6, 2228.6. So this number is uh, approximately 15%. Uh, Approximately, it is to be 15%, or you can say it is like this in a decimal form. Okay, so for one taka of common shareholder security, this company, Starbucks Corporation, has uh, 15 cent or 0.15 taka in uh, net financial obligations or the financial obligations, okay? So if we have uh, some numbers for comparison, we would uh, compare it. Mm. And if you have the industry average, you can also compare it. And uh, so in, this is the way that how can we use the uh, reformulated, reformulate numbers from the reformulated financial statements uh, in the financial ratios, which are kind of uh, modifications of the existing ratios uh, with respect to reformulated financial statement or reformulation task. Okay.